come in one of them. Let's say, Father, we thank you for how far you have led them. Thank you for the journeys of the lives of the groom and the bride. There was a time they were toddlers. Rather, there was a time they were born. They grew up to be toddlers, to be teenagers, to be adults. And up to the point where now they have decided to share the rest of their lives together. Let's thank the Lord for the journey so far in their lives. Because it can only be the Lord who has brought them this far. Let's also thank the Lord for journey mercies for everyone who has come from here from far. For we have not had any incidences or accidents. But the Lord has kept us all in all our journeys and has kept us safe. And I assure you only God can do that. Let's return all the glory back to him and say, Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. We give you glory, oh Lord. And let's thank the Lord for this service and the reception afterwards. Because we know for sure that the Lord has taken over and that everything will go smoothly. Let's say, Father, we thank you for today because you are dwelling with us for your name to be glorified. Thank you, Father, Lord, because it shall be joy all through today in the name of Jesus. Glory and honor, the Lord, to your name. Now let's commit the service into the hands of the Lord and everything that will be done today. Let's say, Father, take absolute control. We are gathered in his presence this morning in fulfillment of a decree that he has made. Because he said, for that reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. And so we are doing his will. This afternoon, let's say, Father, take control. Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Before we take our seats, just remind me one thing. Somebody to your right, to your left, I'm sure most of us are family members who know each other. But look around, maybe there's somebody in the room just to welcome them and say, it's good to be here with you this afternoon. building there's a lift that goes down to the ground floor and there are toilets for the male on the second floor and for the female on the third floor um, there are people at the back if you have any questions or you want to move around the building you need to do anything just speak to the ushers at the back and they'll be able to lead you um, we are sure that there shall be no fire amen except the fire of the holy ghost yes we have been, we have been as part of health and safety in the land, to observe that in case of fire, other than the fire of the Holy Ghost, please don't take the, the, the lift, use the stairs, and just follow the exit sign. Amen. It shall be a joyous moment in the presence of the Lord this afternoon, Jesus name. As we invite the Lord. to rise up with me as we just magnify God this afternoon. I believe the Bible says that when two or three gather in his name, he is here. So I just feel that we just need to reverence the true king that is before us this evening. Amen. Amen. And the best song to reverence him is all oh, hail the power of Jesus' name.
and just reflect on why we're here. Although two people are coming together, we're here to honor the God that is accepting them. The Bible says that a woman should leave her father and a man should leave his mother and father that they can to themselves. The bone of their own bone, the flesh of their own flesh. It's God that instituted marriage. We just want to worship the God who has brought these two together.
We will now go on to the processional hymn as the bridal train march in. Once again, we crave your indulgence to stand with us as we invite the choir to lead us in. Here.
So please read the Bible, read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's make it well done. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and, and have no charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have no charity, it profiteth me nothing. Verse 4. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity founded not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not our home, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Verse 7 Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, it shall cease, and whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Verse 10. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass. Darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Verse 13 and the last verse. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the hearts of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We want to make sure that we finish on time to enable both families to have plenty time for their reception and most importantly to enable them come for service or worship wherever they love to tomorrow in earnest. Uh, the item we want to do now is to listen to the word of God before we go into the marriage blessing proper if you are comfortable where you are to kneel down with me as we worship the most high that would be appreciated Yeah. 
Son and Father, we give you glory this afternoon. Without any utter of doubt, you are a good God. We magnify your name because you are the Alpha and you are the Omega. You are the Ancient of Days. You are the Bright and Morning Star. You are the Bishop of our soul. You are the Fountain of our joy. You are the Controller of our destiny. As a matter of fact, you are our sufficiency. You are our Great Shepherd. The Way, the Truth, and Life. The Great I Am as I Am. There's none like unto you. You are greater than the greatest. You are even so great that the heavens of heaven cannot control you. You chose to live on that. You choose to live in our hearts. Thank you for gift of life. Thank you for preserving our lives to this very day. Thank you for this, your children, that you have brought together as husband and wife. Thank you for the parents where they came from. Thank you because you have blessed them as eternal joy to eternal generation. Thank you that while we are planning this day, you didn't allow any unforeseen circumstances to cancel the day. Thank you for making this day a reality. Thank you for all those travel from far and from near. Thank you for easy passage. Thank you for joining mercy. Above all, thank you for you, the controller of the whole universe. Please accept our glory in Jesus' name. Daddy, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. The world was with God and the world was with God, which means you are the world. This time to reveal yourself to us. Amen. Grant us insight and revelation. Amen. The word you speak, the Holy Spirit and life. Let the word minister life to us. Amen. Jehovah, that the world will hear this day. Let it be enjoyed. Like judgment will not start against the judgment. Amen. My Father and my God, we send you the spirit of the living God to have his way in Jesus' name. Amen. Every spirit of rancor, we bind it now in Jesus' name. Amen. We cast them to bottomless feet in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God that passes to my understanding will release it upon every soul here in Jesus' name. Amen. That by the time we live here, the name of the Lord be glorified. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you Daddy, I set myself apart for you. Let it be all of you and none of me. Amen. Let the world have focus and be glorified. Amen. Daddy, I receive Accuracy of thought and precision of speech. Amen. That the world will come in simplicity, Amen. in accuracy, Amen. and in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, eternal Father. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we'll see better. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. This afternoon, we greet you in the name of the Lord. With any other doubt, we congratulate the family of the bride and we pray your joy concerning what you have done today will be eternal Amen. we congratulate as well the family of the groom and I decree that your head seat will be forever Amen. and all those who have facilitated to see that this day is a glorious day before the end of 2015 nation will celebrate with you Amen. I want to specially welcome and uh, thank our pastor from Nigeria and his wonderful wife, the only sugar in his cup of tea. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome, man. We celebrate God in your life. Amen. Amen. And then to Mr. and Mrs., the journey you have started will have no break. Amen. You have tasted joy. This will be the commencement of greater joy. Amen. The dance looks like it's a better amen. Amen. All right. I don't want to keep us for too long. And this afternoon for this marriage blessing service, I'm taking my text from the book of Genesis chapter 2. I think you will have pen. Would you know that? And... Uh, because I will still ask you thereafter certain things. Genesis chapter 2, we are looking at verses 24 and 25. And by the special grace of God, I want to minister on unique marriage. What do I call it? We serve a unique God that does unique things in a unique way for unique people. And uh, before I move forward, I want to greet specially the other is from Lagos, you will live long man. Amen. The Bible tells us that therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, they were not ashamed. 
Let me start by saying, you now you have to be attentive. If not, I'll call you. We stay together and preach. So by the time I lay hands on you, they'll be doing the party. We'll be and you'll be enjoying the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. That passage we read explain the agenda of God that man and woman should come together as husband and wife. Not Steve and Steve. Praise the Lord. Amen. And to you, Mr. and Mrs., I'd like to let you know that marriage is an action word. You know, we're in Christian, so I'll speak when you English. And you have to act on it. Marriage is an action word, and you have to act on it. Because marriage is not for boys. You have started a journey. You have to work on it for the rest of your lives. And I prophesy, you will not separate. Amen. The agenda of divorce is overturned. Amen. You have to do what? Work on it. And I will share three aspects of marriage based on the word of God. Then I'd like to tell you what you need to do to strengthen the marriage as a unique one. First, God wants me to announce to you that marriage is giving sacrificial love. I didn't just say giving love. Love has, you know, helped me thus far. But for the journey, it has to be sacrificial love. Ephesians 5.25, Paul says something. He says, husband, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. And that reminds me of a story I heard. There was this couple, look up now. I'm told that there's not them because you are the main attraction now. They were in Nigeria. They loved themselves. And then they used to wear the same attire anywhere they're going. So one day on Express Road, I'm rubber stopped there. And they saw in their car that they were Christians, sticker, you know, the cross and everything. And for Jesus alone. And then the hand robber said, well, we are here to rob you. You won't be robbed in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, after we robbed them, they said, well, any time we rob, we kill one person, either the husband and the wife. <laughs> and we realize that both of you, you love yourself, you are in the same attire. But who should we kill first? <laughs> the wife said, my dear, you see now, what should we do? The man said, well, I'm the breadwinner. So you go, I can still be providing bread for the children. Ah, the wife said, glory be to God. If there's no bread, we eat yam. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the man said, see now, you are just one with attire. You are not one in mind. That is why you have to give sacrificial love. So you are going to love her. And then Apostle Paul told us an example of how Christ loved the church and gave his life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ gave himself, not that he killed him, but he gave himself for the church. He sacrificed his life on the cross of Calvary. And that's where Christianity is missing. We have left the, the message of the cross to motivational mercy. That's why we are producing more of people at, at, at the war rather than in the kingdom. And that kind of love Jesus Christ gave through Calvary Cross is what I call sacrificial love. It is self-sacrifice. That's why he became the Lamb of God once and for all for whoever care to believe. So what are we saying? Love we are talking about is self-giving love. Thank God things have moved on the high gear before I do I will have asked you one question then. Then can you be her father? I've asked some people like that when they come to me for the fact that they want to marry. Because a father, no matter how bad your child is, you won't throw him away or her away. The love will still overshadow it. Is that not so? Yes. Paul does not define love, so to speak, while giving your love to the one you love, he's saying you have to make up a decision, your mind, 
that I'm going to do it in a sacrificial way for the sake of love. Love has brought you thus far, but God wants sacrificial love, not expecting something in return. And that kind of love is not conditional. So people in UK, their life are not okay. Why? They said, well, my wife, 50% rent. 50% just be, that will not be a lot. Amen. Every resources to make you the rightful head, God will release unto you. Amen. After today, your life will receive speed. Amen. Every ground you have lost in destiny, Jehovah will bridge it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What is God selling both of you? You should love each other. Not because you know, either of you, you are giving yourself as pleasure, but the way God loves you. Amen? Amen. Uh, and if that is the case, we find out that in our age and day, ladies, women, they give sex for the world or to demand. That will not be your portion. Amen. It is self-sacrifice, kind of love. You have to love yourself to the point of the fact that you, people will see you as a unique husband and wife. Amen. And anywhere you go, your name and your being and your family will bring many to the kingdom. Amen. Ah, let me say better amen. amen. Because I was asking some of our men sometimes ago, we asked him, now that you want to get married, because somebody said, I married my wife as a pencil, now she's a bucket, what do we do? <laughs> if love is there, you won't even look at that. Yes. Praise the Lord. Do you realize that when ladies get married and they are fully settled, they start having children, the body has to adjust. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I didn't say you should keep on sending her to the gym. <laughs> Let love cover that. Hallelujah. Amen. Because a time will come when the the lepashan, the moji you see, my problem be. <laughs> you said it to Pastor. Did you see? Will you still see the love in her? Will you still love her sacrificially? Will you still be out there for her? And uh, Sister Moji, a time is coming, you will see this nice, gentle looking man. And then by that time, after one or two contracts, and then instead of having six pack, he has one back like that. <laughs> will you still love him? That's what God is saying. Hallelujah. God is saying the way Christ loved the church and gave himself. Secondly, marriage is keeping the covenant. It's not a contract. You know when you go to registry, they'll tell you, but in the kingdom of God, marriage is a covenant, not a contract. No matter what, look at me. If not, I lay hands on you. Love has helped you thus far. Commitment will see you through. Amen. That means this marriage must work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That means you keep the covenant no matter what is happening. Ephesians 5, 31. There Paul quotes Genesis 2, 24. So, talking about you are living father and mother now. You are cleaving to your wife. And the two of you, as I'm seeing you now, you are not two. You are one. Biblical mathematics. Biblical apply mathematics say one plus one is equal to one. God bless you as you answer that. So what, what are we saying? It's a mystery. You from your background and she from her background, educational background, different cultural, everything different, and God is bringing you to be one. It's a mystery. The only way, what did I say? I, I can't hear you. You can undo. It's, you bring all of us back. And Jesus Christ, I know this thing. And that will not even happen. Amen. So, it's a mystery. That's how God wants life to be. What kind of relationship is the union of Christ and the church? It's a mystery. It's a covenant relationship. And God is a covenant keeping God. So, if you look at the ring, you put a string at the registry. Does it have an end? That's how your love will be. Amen. 
It's a covenant relationship sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And which means, <laughs> except the fellow want to kill Jesus Christ the second time. When you are taking Holy Communion, in Apostle, Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, and Jesus said in Luke 22, 20, that this cup is the New Testament, new covenant, new agreement, new contract in my blood. So it is in the blood of Jesus that has sealed that covenant. It's a mystery. It's not a contract. You won't get to a level where you remove the ring and throw back at each other. Amen. Can I hear amen? amen. Mama, leave that thing. Let us feel comfortable. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because what Paul is saying, based on this covenant, no matter what it takes, this marriage must it's unbreakable. Amen. Amen. Oh, are you hearing me? Yes. And I prophesy, this marriage is unbreakable. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As Christ's covenant with the church is unbreakable, this your union is unbreakable. Amen. They used to say, for better, for worse, but I prophesy, for good, for better, for best, and for perfection. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number three, because of time, marriage is seeking your happiness. Make her happy. Make him happy. Happy wife, happy life. I say it again. Happy wife, happy life. Can I, you see, I will do it. Ah. Mm -hmm. Amen, Pastor. Okay, we are on the way. Whereas Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 to 27, Apostle Paul said, Christ gives himself for the church so that he can sanctify her and present her spotless. Brothers, when you are going and letting compliments the way you combine your color combination, the man you are seeing standing, it's not because of her. I will have put black upon yellow and top it with green. <laughs> but they are, oh, I will explain it later. Don't they? So that those who are married can just, they, they are not married and can get themselves prepared. You should seek for the joy of each other. But the Bible says, with joy shall you dwell, drop from the well of salvation. Tombo, you will find your happiness in Moji. So, by so doing, you have to try and make her happy for you to be happy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the problem with so many marriages nowadays is that husbands seek their own happiness. Why do? And when things are not going, they, they sleep back to each other. That will not be a lot. As a matter of fact, I don't know the size of bed you used to sleep on. Go and change to four and a half by six. So there's no room for turning back to each other. Praise the Lord. Wife, please seek the happiness of your husband. Love him, submit to him, and then love every member of his family. They are the one who nurture him before you see this handsome looking guy. Mm, make, 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 make in heaven release to the earth to impart generation. And the key is happiness as you sacrifice your selfishness. You sacrifice what? Mm -hmm. When you sacrifice your selfishness, you know what? You will seek a happiness. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when you seek a happiness, oh my, oh my, you too will be happy. As a matter of fact, when she's going, you have to go and look for a big, big teddy dog and say, no go here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, what should you do both to strengthen this marriage as a unique one? Number one, fellowship with to God together. What did I say? When you fellowship with God together, it enhances and strengthens your family. The family that prays together. together. Turn your Bible with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Do you have Bible here? All right, I'll give you one. I'll give you that of a bishop. I want to carry you along. So that we say, Pastor didn't tell us. Mm, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. I'm so practical. Ecclesiastes 4, 9. If that is what we we'll do and we we'll go, it's better. I want you to have a deep understanding. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Don't look for it in New Testament, too. <laughs> uh, all right, they are happy here. Yeah? Two are better because they have a good reward. So, as you come together, there's power of unity. There's nothing you want in heaven and on earth. If both of you are united, you demand from heaven, heaven will do. 
you. That is why you need to fellowship with God together. Daily devotion is important. At night, before you go to bed. And when you are fellowshipping with God, in case there's any differences, you can't go to God without settling it. For the Bible says, you have an offense at day and you bring that offering, leave the offering, go and settle first. Which means, you won't be able to sleep until you fellowship with God together. Is that not so? So that is one of the importance that you need to fellowship with God together. Say, I will do. Moji, God bless you. Number two, what do you need to do to strengthen this marriage as a unique one? Prayer will strengthen your marriage. Prayer will do what? We are in a wicked world. Bad things need prayer to get good and better. Right? Good things need prayer so that it doesn't go bad. And I pray, go on a daily basis. We add sweet wine, new wine to your marriage. Amen. But if you only draw it in the place of prayer. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. I thank God. Said, hmm. Matthew 18, 19 to 20 tells us the power of unity. The two of you come together and pray. It will strengthen your marriage. Before you go to work, pray. Before you send that contract, pray. The two of you agree on it. Don't say I'm the head. Any chicken that has head but has nobody. And has but does not have head. So you know what I'm talking Number three, what do you need to do? To strengthen your marriage as a unique marriage. Get rid of relationships and habits in your life that is toxic. And may I announce this with all humility. I was traveling on, on the tube some years ago. We got to bank and they said, all clear, all clear, all clear. I said, well, I just came from Nigeria. What's happening? What's all clear? Where are we clearing? And I saw everybody trooping out of the train. I said, I will see what is happening. Is it fire? And at the end of the day, everybody came out of the train. And then the driver and the guard, they enter back and they drove off. Which means, sir, ma, from father, from the husband's side, from the wife's side, all clear, all clear, all clear. Amen. God bless you, ma. This is a new union that God has brought as a unique couple. Give them time to sort their marriage out. Oh, yes. And I, I want to announce to that man that I've been having Moji before to come to the scene. Please, all clear. All clear. All clear. And then, <laughs> the lady has been saying, ah, I want to be the one. But the car doesn't fit. All clear. All clear. All clear. God bless you, man. Every relationship that are toxic, every habit. You know, some people say, I, I inherited anger from my father. No, no. Anger is one letter short of danger. So please get rid of it. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why? First Peter 3 7. Say we should deal with our wife as a weaker vessel. So that our prayer will not be in that. You want God to answer you quick? Just handle her gently. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number four, what do you both need to strengthen this marriage as the journey continues as a unique one? Work together as a team. Work together as, and the work team together each achieve more. Complement each other, don't compete with each other. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, I decree from today, go and open the same bank account. Amen. Buy house in both names. Amen. Buy cars in both names. Amen. Buy shares in both names. Amen. Complement each other. Don't compete. I don't know who's earning the highest wages. Bring it to the Lord. If you can't give your husband, if you give your husband your body, you should be able to give him your money. If you give your wife your body, you should be able to give her your money. Amen. And so people, when they can't even give God money, they, they can't give God their life. Praise the Lord. That's a hard knot to crack. I will ask the day you, you have another baby. Praise the Lord. Amen. Cover each weakness. Cover is her weakness. You two cover is weakness. That's why God has made you one flesh now. You are no longer two. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, then I uh, see what you're talking about. Ah, that's how it behaves. No, 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 no. It's not allowed. It's a no-go area. 
Ah, uh, see, Moji, what she did for me. Ah, uh, no, I don't think my wife will be able to do that. Cover each other's weaknesses. Now, let me round up with this. Pastor Tokumbo, I'm professing you now. Amen. Your wife is what you make her to be. Your wife is what you make her to be. What do I mean? When God gives Eve to Adam, nobody told Adam who the woman is. See, there's bomb in the Bible, bomb, B-O-M-B. The moment you sight her, say, ah, this is my bone, be off my bone. That's my bone. That means God gave Eve to Adam as a raw material. So with this raw material in your hand now. You know some people say, I don't like where my dad, eh, my wife is not good at this, it's not good at that. No, it's what you make her to be. Because the Bible said in Genesis that God gave Adam a deep sleep and then opened him up and removed one rib and formed the woman and then brought her to Adam. So that means God is saying, ah, 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 this is a byproduct of Adam in another form which has more to be woman. And woman means man with womb. Womb man. He just removed the <coughs> you understand what I said? So which means Adam was saddled with the responsibility of cultivating and producing the woman. So God has brought Moji to you, listen carefully, to cultivate and produce the woman. <coughs> you know, as I'm looking at you, I'm now having a resemblance. Okay? It's only the couple that is different. That means you have to make Moji, what you want her to be, but in conformity with the will of God. That's why Ephesians 5 21 says, Each of you should submit one to the other in the fear of God. Don't want to say, I'm the head. Don't put on your jacket. <laughs> Women are takers, men are givers with all humility and our explain. When you give to a woman, a seed, she will process it and give you what? Children. It will give you back to you. Give her money to go to Tesco, she will come back with groceries. You can't produce groceries with your money at home. So what you give her, she will produce. So if your wife is not giving you what you want, you have to check by what you are giving to her. So men will lash their wife outside. They are doing damage to themselves. The day they now mess up, your eye will be able to take it. So God has given you Moji to cultivate and then to produce. Once again, I remind you, happy wife, happy life. And to make your wife happy will require effort on your part. Why? Women generally, so they are emotional beings. What you will take with both face, you will be to talk. <laughs> it's the way God created them. So don't, don't, compl don't complicate the work of God. If, if you don't give her the right of words, believe me honestly, don't expect to get right action. See that here. Mind the words you both speak to each other. And as you start to raise children, you are their example. So what you will do, they will multiply it. They will produce it in multiples. There was a year I took my daughter to school and I saw one boy beating the other one. This teacher said, stop. He said, that's how my dad beats my mom at home. And the mom said, shut up. He said, mom, you want me to lie? Thank God for you, kid. They'll tell you how, why, when, what. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please don't compare your husband with another husband. This is a unique one. Don't compare your wife. Don't even compare your wife to your mother. Praise the Lord. With that, people will see the glory of God and they will know indeed yours is a unique family. Every marriage has needs. Sure, you know. All right. A man has their own needs, which are not ready to talk because there are a lot of children here. Mm -hmm. But if 
she finds security in you. Oh, you get it. Let me conclude by saying love, which has brought you thus far, and commitment will take you further. That love is about identifying, caring, and even fulfilling each other's needs. I see God taking you far. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And then, don't let me tell you a lie. Marriage is not a bed of, it's not a bed of roses. There will be instances when you reason together. Reason together, I heard of a pastor said, I was raised in Nigeria and my wife was raised in UK. And when they got married and they were talking, the woman said to the husband, don't be silly. He said, me silly? He said, no, I was not abused. I was advising you. He said, no, you don't advise me. I'm the head. He said, but later he realized that uh, we need to meet other people's needs. Uh, in UK, don't be silly, it's an advice. In Nigeria, it's Islam. <laughs> I pray you remember this day for good. The efforts of both parents on you will not be in vain. God will bless you with glorious children. After this one, you have twins are coming. In the name of Jesus Christ. May I conclude by saying, the moment God raised you as unique couple, let this marriage remain unique forever. Amen. And it counts on your both commitment. This marriage must work. Amen. Maybe if you are under the sound of my voice, you are not yet born again. That means you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. As a matter of fact, what they call born again, like speaking in tongues. It's so simple. It's accepting. The sacrifice Christ did on Calvary cross for me and you, so that legally it belongs to Jesus. Maybe you want to give your life and say, Oh, yes, the day Tokumbo and Moji came to the, for their marriage blessing service, that was my birthday spiritually. I'll give you a opportunity for me to invite you so that you permit me to pray with you. Maybe you are once born again, but you're taking the life back. I say, Congratulations. The man speaking to you, I didn't drop as a pastor. Some some old years ago, the volume for alcohol, I used to drink and sell a ship. But thank God, God saved me. And my life has never been the same since then. He will just treat you as a newborn babe. Before you ask, he will give. Why all eyes are closed? Time is not our brother. You want to surrender your life to Jesus and say, come and be the love of my life. Order my steps. Lead me on the right path. Wash me clean off with your blood. Forgive me of my sins. Heal my land and then make sure that I, get, I make it to heaven. Just wave to the Lord. Tell me now, I'll pray for you wherever you are. And then the new journey starts with you as you continue with the good journey now. Just wave to the Lord. I'll pray for you and with you wherever you are. All right, which means we are all born again. Shall we please rise? Here, yeah, I will invite who is presenting Moji for marriage blessing? As I invite Pastor Yakub Abdullah to join me here, as you want to pray for them and bless them. Come forward. Hold your wife. Just go that little Bible. divine arrangement we want to bless the marriage of Moji and Tokumbo so why you put on the knees Worship you. Daddy, I know 
He said he that finded a wife, finded a good thing. That we are here in your presence is not by mind, it's not by power, but it is by your divine arrangement. I speak to you, Mujisola and Tokumbo. Because your husband and wife, it is well with you. Not it shall be. I decree it is well with you. I command by the divine arrangement of the Lord Jehovah that your wedding shall be pleasant. Amen. Yes, somebody will be somewhere. That may be against your wedding. The word of God said, whatever we decree shall be established. It is not by authority, it's not by power. What is the authority? Maha Kabosh. Let all your enemy be silent. Amen. My pastor said something. He said somebody somewhere, man or woman, looking. Yes. Even as we as pastors, they still like us. Our pastor, I love your suit. Don't love my suit. Because that suit belong to somebody not to the love but something they love I command every power that will break your marriage every intruder being a man being a woman there is a war let that be authority taking them away in the name of Jesus it is not a joke. It is a serious matter. Flying from Nigeria to UK. Oh, la It is an authority. In this church, they will know it. Excuse me, sir. When the queen will be passing out, says there is a place called Luton. There is a redeemed there. Please take me there. Because God will show her. Amen. God will do that. Amen. Provision because there is a marriage for two couples here this morning. I mean this afternoon. I command Mujisola and Matis. You will be the head. Amen. You will never be the tail. Man that has turned a rope around you, Rikabosh, La Ikababolima Hantalebosh. I said, Yeah, yes, let's see how they are going to walk. How is it going to end? Hey, Obatun Shun Senikolish. You have not given me water, but the food of God is that his name is above all nations. Moji. Martins, there will be a standing ovation for you. Amen. In London. Amen. Your name will not be known in the prison. Moji Sola. Among the pregnant women, among people that will produce children, you will not be taken to the mortuary. Amen. 
Oh, Tibo. Are you listening? What Finu show you? The dividend of this marriage shall be your portion. Amen. Will not work against you. Amen. Are you listening? I command upon your life today every sheke sheke. Rekabosh! That has been putting deviation between both of you. Today, I place you in the circle of the love of Jesus. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, gave his only belonging son, that whichever person believes in it will not perish. Both of you, you will not perish. In the saturation of the power of the Holy Spirit, will be your guide. Will be your portion. Every enemy you have been seeing, Pharaoh Lee does not want the children of Israel to go. But the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, look at your back. All these enemy, you will not see them again. Amen. I don't know where the enemy is coming from. They may come from east. They may come from west. They may come from south. They may come from north. Moji and Martins, you won't see them again. Amen. I will not regret blessing you today. Amen. He said it's the blessing of God that make it riches and added no sorrow. Anything that will bring sorrow into your home, I command. Join my faith with my brother in the Lord that you will rejoice all the days of your life. Amen. You will not use your hand to bury your children. Amen. You will celebrate when they are celebrating. Amen. In the days of their graduation, you will graduate. Amen. You will go there and celebrate with them. Amen. And for everybody saying amen, amen, the blessing of God will follow you. Amen. And you will you love this. You've been wanting it. I command. A good news will be here in the life and the house of the righteous. Amen. My pastor said, if you know you are born again, <laughs> you should come out. My pastor said the word, and God tell me you are all liars. He said, <laughs> you are born again. If you know you are born again, come out. We all sat down because we are ready to go and eat right. The Lord said, I should tell you you are liars. Because you have told somebody you are stupid, you are mad, you are crazy. You are not yet born again. Instead of you to repent your soul, to come closer to God and let God see you, he will sat down. You want to make the pastor a liar? Hello, sir. Repentance of hearts is a renewal of hearts. Are you there? Are you repent? You have not. 